In today's episode, we are going to look at moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. We've talked about how to find the centroids of figures individually and we've also tackled the composite shapes. So let's look at moment of inertia. So the second moment of area is also known as moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia is the same as finding the second moment of area for a plain figure or a composite shape. Are we good? So what then is moment of inertia? It is the sum of the product of the elemental areas and the square of their distances from the reference axis are we good to the centroids so this definition is giving us a clear formula for moment of inertia which says the product of the elemental areas and the square of their distances from the reference axis to the centroids with this definition, we will understand it better if we try to use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia. Let's move forward. I will explain it with the diagram and how to get the product of the elemental areas and what it means to say the square of the distances from the reference axis to their center. Already, we've talked about centroids, so we will be able to locate the center of the plane figure. Then we will look at the distance from the center to a reference axis. It's quite simple. Are we okay? All right. So the third point is saying moment of area is always positive. Put it in mind. The moment of area is always positive. We saw that for, for the centroid, we can have both negative and positive. Are we okay? The center can be positive or negative depending on what the axis, depending on the reference axis. It can be positive or negative direction. Are we okay? But for the moment of area, it is always positive. Since looking at this parameter, the square of their distances from the reference axis to the center, maybe the distance from the reference axis to the center is negative 2. But here we are talking about the square. Once we square this, we are going to get a positive 4. That means everything for moment of area is going to end up being in positive because of this square of their distances are we okay so in order to dive deeper we have to know the moment of inertia for simple geometric areas or shapes before we tackle composite shapes or we try to solve questions so we have a rectangle a triangle a square and a circle these are some of the basic geometric shape that we have to know their moment of area or moment of inertia so before we start with this idea of moment of inertia it is the same as when we were dealing with centroids with this you must always have a reference axis so we can see our y axis we can see our x here in this diagram we have our y we have our x the same happens to the square the x is there the y is there for the circle we have our x and our y what do you see from these diagrams we can see that our reference axes are positioned at the center of the simple area or the shape it is placed at the center here and the same thing center here are we okay so in a situation where our axis 
is at the center of the plane figure. These are the formulas we are using to calculate the moment of what? Inertia. Remember, always the question will ask you to find the moment of inertia with respect to a reference axis. Okay, with respect to a reference axis. The same thing happening at central is where we find the center of the plane figure with respect to an axis the moment of inertia is also going to apply the same principle you have to locate your axis are we okay so here we assume that our axis are at the center already so in that case to find the moment of inertia for a rectangle about the x axis which is at the center or it is at the centroid of the figure it is giving us i x i x where i is the moment of inertia and x means about the axis x is going to be the base times the height cube on 12. so once you know the value for the base which is let's say 2 and the height say 1 you put it in place that means 2 by 1 cube on 12 and whatever you are getting for this is going to be the i x that is the moment of inertia of this plane figure about the x axis and it is going to be in what either millimeter to the power 4 centimeter to the power 4 or meter to the power 4 because the base is in meters and this is cube so that is going to give us what four so that's what this ix means what if you are to find the moment of inertia about the y axis which is also at the center bear in mind sometimes the axis may not be at the center the same way we saw for the centroid we can position this y axis over here and you may be asked to find the moment of inertia with respect to the axis y are you okay all right so that's in that instance we have an alternative of doing we will apply the parallel axis theorem but a situation where we have it at the center we can just apply our formulas and straight away we will get the values so our i y moment of inertia of the figure about the y-axis it is going to interchange the height and the base so this is going to be the height the base cube on 12 about the x it is the height which is cubed but about the y it is the base that is what cubed are you okay so this applies to rectangular figures let's look at the triangle the triangle to once we have let's assume this at the center and the y at the center then our i x is going to be b h cube on 12 and our i y is also going to be h b cube on 48 so you see the i y is changing from the i x are you okay so with this we can also get the i x c as b h cube on 36 are you okay so either you are going to use the i x c or the i x each of them has its own formula and when we come to a square since the base is equal to the height then our ix or ixx is equal to our iy or the i double y which is equal to base to the power 4 on 12 are we okay so we assume that it is the same as the rectangle but here the base is equal to the height so b raised to the power 4 on 12 that's for a square it's quite simple about the 
x axis is equal to about the y axis once it is positioned at the center and we look at circle so for a circle two since it is symmetrical about the x and about the y also we are going to say our i x x is equal to our i double y and that is going to give us pi d4 on 64 so to find the moment of inertia for this circle it is going to be pi d4 on 64 so we are going to apply all this in our analysis and during our problem solving especially for composite shapes and that is going to be interested so let's assume a composite shape like this so we have a figure like this are we okay so here we have the outer rectangle this is a rectangle and we have an inner one are we good so what we are trying to say from this analysis is that for a composite shape like this the moment of inertia is the addition of let's say if the shape is shape one we have shape two plus i x three are we okay you just add the moment of inertia for shape one to that of shape two to that of shape three the same thing happens to i y for the entire composite shape is going to be the i1 for the first figure plus i1 for the second figure and that for the third figure are we good so but we have to note something in centroids in centroids once a shape is cut out the area becomes what negative area are we okay the same thing when we come to moment of inertia once a figure is cut out its moment of inertia becomes what negative are we okay remember we said we always have positive moment of inertia that's for figures that are what simple figures let's say for just a one rectangle a one square then you cannot calculate and get a negative but for composite shape once a shape is cut out from the entire shape we are going to assume that that cutout has a negative moment of what inertia or negative area are we okay so looking at this diagram the outer diagram has a height of h and a base of what b so meaning our ix for the entire figure the outer one is going to be b h cube on 12 and since there are two figures here we just have to add the moment of what inertia about the x axis so i will add it to the second one but the second one is a cut out and that is going to be a negative one so minus it has a base of b1 b1 and a height of h1 h1 cube the same thing on 12 so once you simplify this your ix is going to be b h cube on 12 minus b1 h cube on 12 because the second is a cut out so we can also do that same thing for the i on the y axis and we will see how best we will come out with an expression so this two for our i on the y is going to be h b q on 12 and the cutout is going to be negative h1 b1 q on 12 for that so remember all cutouts are considered as negative areas so with this simple introduction we should be able to solve questions 
and apply the moment of inertia. But in the next episode, we are going to tackle the parallel axis theorem. Whatever we did here, we assume that the axis is placed at the center, so there's no stress here. You just apply the formula. But what if the axis is placed somewhere not at the center? That's where we are going to apply what we call the parallel axis theorem. And that one is more practical. We mostly encounter those examples or those problems in our exams and questions. So let's look at that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and share the video.